welcome to my owner's review and buyer's guide on the E92 BMW 335i. Now much of what I know I've learned over the last 12 months of owning this car, it was the cheapest 335i available on the market 12 months ago and it's been quite an experience which I will share with you now. So let's start with the interior, pillarless doors, or a small door pocket with a, another small bit there, but somewhere to put your phone, I guess. Crumb collection. You lose the centre seat that we had in the E46, but we do have Isofix, and we also lose out the on the pop-out windows that the E46 had. Two proper cup holders in the rear. Very little storage. These buttons here move the seat forwards and backwards faster, which allows good access to the rear for passengers. This is what appears to be a coffee warmer. All we've got on this early model is an AUX input. No iDrive. The only way to access anything is through this. Somewhere to put your wallet. And somewhere to put your gloves. I usually just leave my service history in there. So we've got this little torch, BMW torch, and barely ever gets removed. Got another cup holder for the actual passenger. These are quite a reach. They're the only cup holders for the driver. You've got electric seatbelt butlers, but on the driver's side, it appears to be worn to the point of not quite catching the seatbelt. I'll show you it on the passenger side. Now with the B pillar being quite far back, obviously this makes it a lot easier for most passengers to reach the seatbelt. I've also noted that you get a speaker under the driver and passenger seat. Now the sound system is pretty good on this. It's not an upgrade system, but it is pretty good compared to my one series at least. Automatic gearbox is a little bit lazy. The accelerator pedal is not very responsive unless you put the car in sport mode. The gearbox, however, when using the paddle shift on the steering wheel and also placing the car in sport mode is very responsive. Especially considering the car has 100 and 40,000 miles plus.
boot size isn't bad. The opening is not too bad at all. No spare wheel. I think there should be a tire repair kit in there. The back seats do fold down by pulling these levers here. Now for some reason you get a recirculate button on the steering wheel, which is for the climate control of course. Apparently on the iDrive models, these two buttons are programmable, so you wouldn't have to have the recirculate and that one's the media selection. Exterior, this is the only E90 model that I think is good looking. They didn't ma quite manage to capture the same lines on the saloon or the estate. Front wings are plastic, so they won't suffer the rot that the E46 did. Got these if you want roof bars fitting. Now you'll notice that the wheels are aftermarket on this car, and initially I thought, and I'm not really that keen on aftermarket wheels, I, I suspect them, always suspect them to be made of cheese or something not quite adequate. However, the genuine BMW wheels on these suffer from cracking quite often. I, I priced up a set for this car to replace these aftermarket ones and found wheels with as many as five welds in. So it's not necessarily a bad thing to have aftermarket wheels on these, especially if you've just bought one. If you're on a budget, I would suggest making sure that the brakes have been replaced. Also, check the quality of the tyres that are fitted to the car. Quite often when these cars have been run on a budget, they, won't, they definitely won't be fitted with premium tyres. But also, check the date code. So we, we do have some decent tyres on here. And they are manufactured in the 37th week of 2019. So, pay attention. It's, it's worth noting the tyres that have been fitted to the car, as this will give you an indication of how well the car has been looked after. The mirrors really are too small. I know this will be for aerodynamics, but when manoeuvring, and even on the motorway, you'll quite often have to adjust the mirrors just to be able to see far enough back. One of my favourite things to see on any car are twin reverse lights. I love everything to be symmetrical. You also get twin rear fog lights. Now the side lights that you can see on here are integrated LEDs in the light. And there's two separate lights. Now if these fail then you will need a complete new light unit.
The angel eyes look great. They are provided by a single H8 bulb in each headlamp. I did look for some upgrade bulbs that were a little less yellow because in contrast to the headlights, the projector headlights, when they're lit, they are very yellow. The projector headlamps themselves are really good. They do light up the road incredibly well. Engine wise, do your research. This is the early N54 engine which is the 3 litre twin turbo. The N55 later engine is a single turbo. Now there are different issues with both of these engines. You'll want to do your research separate to this video, there's, there's too much to go into, but briefly you've got the wastegate actuators, which were an issue on this, I replaced the turbos on this. You've got the rocker cover gasket, that's not an easy job at all. You've got the high pressure fuel pump, that hasn't happened to me, but I've seen it over the internet. You've also got plenty of opportunities for boost leaks, which is another thing I haven't encountered. Another thing to note when deciding between an early model like this 2006 and a later model like from 2009-2010, at which point they went to single turbo. Now, the original twin turbo engine fitted in this, the road tax is £585 a year. The later single turbo N55 engine is only £315 a year to tax, which yes, is still a lot of money, but it's not near enough £600, which is paid monthly £51.12 a month, which is over £600. You can easily avoid obvious issues by asking the current owner to leave the car cold making sure that the car is cold upon arrival you can leave the bonnet open if you want but all you really need is the driver's door open like this start the car and if you can hear loud ticking coming from this area here or this side of the engine then it most likely will need the wastegates, wastegate actuator arms replacing. As you can hear, this one runs smooth. If there's any other ticking from this area, some of it could be the injectors, the injectors can tick. And also the top end can tick a little bit if the oil hasn't picked up right away they're not all that bad to service yourself i have got videos on here showing the servicing air filters here cabin filters here when it comes to the spark plugs you will need to remove all of this panel to be able to access just to get the engine cover off you do need to remove this panel so to get access to the top of the engine you do need to remove quite a bit of stuff but once you get there it's not too bad you do need a special socket for the bmw type spark plugs that's a 12 point socket Panels and lights, fittings, everything like that are not cheap. The wings, the wings aren't too bad because of the plastic, but bumpers and lights are not cheap at all. So if you do get one that's a little bit tatty, bear that in mind. That it may not be as cheap as you think it is to repair. 
early models such as these with an auto box are going to be your sub £5,000 mark. That's generally because people aren't demanding the auto box as much, even though with the flappy paddles, I don't find it much of an issue having the auto box because it means that you can be quite lazy on longer journeys and this is a great cruiser. I've used this for most of my long distance journeys over the last year. And also the road tax is, is going to be a factor in why these end up being the cheaper model. Although they haven't depreciated at all over the last year. In fact, I've seen a slight increase. I do think that they will go up in price now. I think they're already a classic, in all honesty. The E46s are getting snapped up very quickly. And next it will be the E92. If you are looking to get a better example, obviously everyone will tell you to get an M Sport manual from 2009 onwards. This will benefit you with the lower tax bracket, but do bear in mind that low mileage isn't always a good thing. You'll want to try and find one that's averaged a good mileage per year, hasn't been used on too many short journeys, where the engine hasn't been allowed to warm up properly. So high mileage isn't necessarily a bad thing, but do look up the specific issues when it comes to the mileage. So the N54 and N55 engine have different particular issues at different particular mileages, sometimes at any mileage. So bear that in mind. So thanks for watching, I do hope parts of this video have helped and if you have any further questions please do ask them in the comments section, otherwise like and subscribe and I hope to see you in the future.